Okay, in this video, I'm going to give you guys four of my reasons on why we should define 0 factorial to be 1. I'm not saying I'm proving 0 factorial is equal to 1. I'm trying to say that we should define 0 factorial to be 1 because we have these four situations, okay? So let's take a look. So for the first one, it's just that I will use the usual definition of n factorial when n is a positive whole number, okay? So when n is a positive whole number, as we all know, n factorial is just equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on, and then we reach 2 times 1 and we stop. And you see, based on this definition, if you just plug in 0 in here, it wouldn't make sense, right? Because if you have 0 factorial, what should we do on the right-hand side? Should we put down 0 or whatever? No, right? However, uh, as I said, 0 factorial is defined to be 1, and we will have a pattern for it, okay? Because we must define 0 factorial to be 1, otherwise it's not going to follow this nice pattern. Let me show you. So let me just use the number, let's say, if we have 4 factorial. As we know, this is just equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. We can work this out. That will give us 24, okay? And then 3 factorial, this is nothing but just 3 times 2 times 1, namely 6. And then you can guess it what I'm going to do next, right? I put down 4, I put down 3. So the next one, I'll put down 2. And then when you have 2 factorial, of course, it's just 2 times 1. And you see that this is just 2. And now, let's take a look. 4, 3, 2. The next one will be 1. And of course, I will show you 1 factorial. But if you ignore the computation here, just pay attention to the result. From 24 to 6, from 6 to 2, what's happening? Well, from here to here, we divide it by 4, isn't it? From here to here, we divide it by 3, isn't it? Right? 6 divided by 3 is 2. 4, 3, the next one we should divide is 2. So we should have 2 divided by 2, and 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1. And now you see, the left-hand side and the right-hand side, if they want to follow the same pattern, they have to be equal, and 1 factorial is equal to 1. And now, 4, 3, 2, 1. The next number is going to be 0 on my list. 0 factorial, right? Ignore that, but if you look at divided by 4, divided by 3, divided by 2, the next number has to be divided by 1. 1 divided by 1 is equal to 1. And congratulations, you'll see that 0 factorial should be defined to be 1 so that we can have this nice pattern, right? Otherwise, you see, this pattern wouldn't follow. Okay, so this is the usual way that people explain why that we have 0 factorial uh, being equal to 1. Now, here is a second way. So I will have to tell you guys, this is for like arrangements, combinatorial, okay? So recall that n factorial, this means, okay, this calculates the number of ways to arrange an object, okay, on a line, okay? So what you can do is, for example, 3 factorial, you can just think about it, we are going to arrange 3 letters on a line, okay? So here I will just give you guys an example. Let's see how to arrange 3 things. I will just call them to be A, B, and C, okay? Based on this, if you just do 3 factorial, you know there will be a total of 6 configuration, right? 6 configuration. Let me just show you real quick. So if you want to arrange A, B, C, what you can do is, you can do an A, B, C like this. And I'm just saying on a line, right? So it's not like triangle or like a circular whatsoever. Anyway, in this case, arrangement ma matters. The order of the letters matters because A, B, C is very different from A, C, B. And this is the only two ways that we have if A wants to go first. Next, I can have B goes first, so we have B, A, C, and then maybe B, C, A. And then we will have C goes first, C, A, B, and then C, B, A. And that's it. And as you can see, if you want to arrange three things, A, B, C, we will have a total of six ways to do it, right? So here we will have three factorial equals to six. Six ways, six arrangement, that's all. Now, what if I want to arrange one thing, 
Okay, I want to just arrange A, for example. Then the only way is just put on A. That's all, isn't it? So this will actually show you why one factorial has to be one. You only see one thing, right? One configuration. Now, if you don't want to arrange anything, if you want to arrange nothing, what's the only way to do it? You only have one way to do it. That's just like empty, like this. You have nothing, right? You have one configuration, and that's nothing. So this right here shows you why zero factorial should be defined as one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Moving on to the third part, and now we are getting you know, more serious. Now, n factorial, and maybe some of you guys have noticed I've done uh, several videos on this topic recently. We will be using the pi function or the gamma function. Zero factorial, I mean n factorial, is defined D to be if you want to extend the concept of factorial. You can do it like this pi of n, okay, the pi function, you plug in n, or the gamma function when you plug in n plus 1. One way or the other, you can check out my other video for a more detailed explanation, but I will just use pi of n because this is just going to be you know, n factorial to be 0 to infinity, right, integral from 0 to infinity, t to the nth power times e to the negative t dt. Now, if I want to have 0 factorial, all I'm going to do is I can plug in 0 into this n, so this is the integral from 0 to infinity, t to the 0th power times e to the negative t dt. And we're doing some calculus right here, haha. Huh? So this doesn't matter, e to, uh, t to the 0 power is just 1, so this is just integral from 0 to infinity, e to the negative t dt. So this is, we integrate that, we get negative e to the negative t, and we plug in t is going from 0 to infinity, so we will have negative e to the negative infinity, and then minus, plugging in 0 into here, so we we'll still have the negative e to the negative 0, like that. This right here, because we have negative infinity for the power, we bring this down to a denominator, so 1 over infinity is 0, negative 0 doesn't matter, so it's still 0, minus, this is going to give us 1, and that's going to be negative 1. And in the end, 0 minus negative 1 is just 1. So we see that 0 factorial should be equal to 1. And if you use this concept here, you can also plug in n is equal to 1 half or negative 1 half or any other fraction if you like, but you may not end up with a nice answer if you plug in, let's say, 1 over 5. And if you, the interesting thing is that if you plug in a negative integer, in fact, it's not going to work because this improper integral diverges. So this is pretty much it, and now I will have to erase the board. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys the last reason that I have for you guys, okay? And we will be utilizing power series. I'm not going to use my best friend, I'm going to use my other friend. It's also just as good as my best friend, okay? I will be using e to the x as an illustration. So if you guys recall that, based on the power series, e to the x is equal to the sum when n goes from 0 to infinity, x to the nth power over n factorial. And most importantly, you have to indicate that this is good for all x values, okay? So this is good for all x values. So you can plug in x is equal to negative 100, and this is still going to be true. e to the negative 100 is equal to the sum from 0 to infinity, negative 100 to the nth power over n factorial. Okay, now, here is the deal. You have to remember that, based on this right here, you have to actually choose an n, uh, x value first, okay? So of course, we are talking about 0 factorial, I'm going to let x to be 0. And because this is true for all x, of course I can use x equal to 0. So I would just say let x is equal to 0. Plugging 0 onto the left-hand side, we get e to the 0's power. And of course, we'll do the same thing right here. So this is the sum when n goes from 0 to infinity, 0 to the nth power over n factorial, okay? And now, once again, we pick the x value, this is what we have, and on the right-hand side, we can expand this. Let's write this out. When we do so, let me just keep everything in this form. 
I have to first plug in n is equal to 0 into this n and this n. So I will actually get 0 to the nth power, which is 0, over 0 into here, so it's 0 factorial, right? And now I will just plus plugging n is equal to 1 to here and here, and this is still 0 to the first power over 1 factorial. And you see the pattern, the next one is 0 to the second power over 2 factorial, and so on, okay? And usually, as I said, if you want to plug in any different x value, this actually looks really cool. But when you, bunch, when you have a bunch of zeros, you just have to be careful with it. Anyway, on the left-hand side, e to the zero, we know that's just equal to 1. And maybe I can do another video later on on you know, why we should define the zero's power to be 1. But you know, this is all about factorial. Now, 0 to the first power is 0, over 1 is 0, and likewise, everything else, they all have a 0, so all in all, all these guys is equal to 0, right? And we have this part, it's really bizarre. 1 is equal to 0 to the zeroth power over 0 factorial, and now we have two things to handle. What is 0 to the zeroth power? And I actually did a video in the past that uh, show you guys that, let me just draw this right here. For convenience purpose, okay, I will just tell you guys by convention. And this is what it means by by convention. We are going to have 0 to the 0 to be 1, okay? And this is true by convention in the power series situation. It's just for convenience. So that we don't have to worry about this too much. We can just use 1 for it. In another one now, we were just going to have 1, this is my 1, and that's equal to, on the top, we have 1 over 0 factorial. Well, 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 if you look at 1 is equal to 1 over some number, what does this number have to be? This number has to be 1, isn't it? So finally, we can conclude that 0 factorial has to be 1. Okay, well, I just say should be also equal to 1. I will just say 0 factorial should also be 1. Okay? And with that, these are my four reasons on why we should define 0 factorial to be 1. You can leave a comment down below and let me know which of the reasons that you guys liked the most. Okay? And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe. And thank you guys so much. I will see you guys soon. And as always, that's it.